The movie begins at a doll factory in Thailand. It looks like all the workers are very tired of making ninja dolls. After that, the director of a Danish company named Ever came to check the condition of his new factory. He came with an interpreter and saw factory workers dominated by miners. Ever, who put his scarf on sewing material, was accidentally picked up by a boy's worker and sewed into a ninja doll. Seeing this, Eber was very upset and beat the boy to death. After being satisfied, Eber left the factory. But suddenly, there was lightning that grabbed the ninja doll earlier and was created because it was possessed by a spirit. The ninja doll left the factory and continued to a cargo ship. The ninja doll entered the ship and was found by the ship's captain. The scene moves to Denmark, where a boy named Alex lifts with his half-brother Sune and his stepfather John. While having breakfast together, John distinguished between Sune's and Alex's treatment. He only bought bread for Sune. At school, Alex met his friend named Odie. While in class, Alex kept looking at a girl from his school that he liked. The girl's name is Jessica. Since today is Alex's birthday, it looks like all the family gathered together to celebrate the birthday party, including his uncle, Stuart. The gift-giving session begins. John presents Alex with a replica sunflower, but he also gives Sune a gift in the form of a video game. It is seen that John is very picky about his children. After that, Stuart gave Alex a special gift, a ninja doll he found on the ship. The next day, when he was at school, Alex showed the doll to his friends. Then came Glenn, who always pranked Odie with his glasses. Suddenly, Alex's ninja puppet spoke, provoking Glenn. Glenn, who heard it, felt annoyed and bothered Alex back. Luckily, a male teacher came when Glenn was about to hit Alex. Jessica, who saw Alex dare to fight Glenn, was amazed, and everyone thought that the one who provoked Glenn earlier was Alex. Long story short, when Alex was about to come home from school, he stopped by a booth to make sure his doll could talk. When Alex asked his doll to talk, Glenn suddenly answered his question. Glenn warns Alex not to mess with him while threatening him. Again, when Glenn left, the ninja doll started talking to him. Alex, who panicked, immediately pedaled his bicycle, followed by Glenn, who was chasing him. After that, the ninja doll talks to Alex and offers him a deal. It would help him if Alex helped the ninja doll do something, and he finally agreed. When Glenn was about to catch Alex, the ninja doll squirted something into Glenn's eye, causing him to fall. Arriving at his house, Alex still didn't think his ninja doll could talk. Shortly after, Sune came into Alex's room and said he was invited to Jessica's party. He knows that Alex likes Jessica. After that, Sune takes Alex's poetry book and reads its contents to make fun of him. It turned out that the book was a collection of love poems for Jessica. Then Sune threatens Alex to do his homework. If he rejects the request, Sune will distribute the poetry book. After Sune left, again, the ninja doll kept talking until Alex was confused because he was talking to a doll. Even the ninja doll invites him to be friends because they promise to help each other. As a first step, the ninja doll gives Alex a credit card. It turned out that the card belonged to Jessica's father. The ninja doll ordered Alex to return the credit card directly to its owner. In the evening, Alex takes the ninja doll to his and Odie's base. At that place, the ninja doll started training him. The next day while in the school cafeteria, the ninja doll told Alex to follow its instructions. He was told to repeat the words of the ninja doll that all the kids in the cafeteria were watching. It turns out that Alex challenges Glenn to a fight at his base. Of course, Glenn agreed to Alex's request for a duel. After that, Jessica approached Alex, and thanks to his courage to challenge Glenn, she invited him to her birthday party. After school, Alex and the ninja doll went to his headquarters and built a battle arena. At the same time, he also learned ninja moves. They do it together for days, starting from building the arena to practice. Alex looks very serious in his practice. One night while they were both relaxing, Alex curiously asked the doll if it was a real ninja. Then the doll began to explain about the ninja. Initially, ninja lived in the forest, especially Ida's territory, only to protect his clan from the samurai clan. The samurai clan considered ninja a threat. One day, the prince of the samurai clan sent 4,000 troops to destroy all ninja clan members. But some of them managed to save themselves while the rest died. There was one person named Taiko Nakamura. He hid in the forest with 10 of his disciples who managed to survive. But the samurai managed to find them and kill the 10 students. Taiko, who was dying, felt very angry and decided to end his life to get justice. From that incident, Nakamura turned into a spirit of revenge that could possess anything, including dolls. Long story short, the day of the duel between Alex and Glenn arrived. Many of Alex's school friends came to watch. At that time, Alex starts playing a prank on Glenn, who is assisted by Nakamura, until Glenn finally falls into a mud puddle. At first, Alex thought he had won, but suddenly Glenn got up and hit him straight away. He starts beating Alex. Fortunately, Alex managed to retaliate thanks to the ninja moves taught by Nakamura. Alex also managed to beat Glenn and told him to apologize to everyone he had bullied. 
Time passed, and the day to go to Jessica's party had arrived. Alex then went there together with Nakamura. Arriving there, Alex became the center of attention of his school friends because he managed to beat Glenn. After that, Alex went to Jessica's father to return his credit card. Unbeknownst to Alex, Nakamura intends to kill Jessica's father because he thinks Jessica's father is the one who killed the child in Thailand the other day. But Nakamura cancels his intention when he sees Jessica's father's face, which is not the same. Only their names are the same, namely Eber. A few moments later, Jessica meets Alex and asks him to dance, but Nakamura tries to stop Alex and reminds him that now Alex must help him find Eber. Alex tried to refuse because now was an opportunity for him to get close to Jessica. Angered that Alex didn't keep his promise, Nakamura starts to prank him in front of his friends. Nakamura also told Jessica if she did not fit Alex's criteria. Jessica was angry because she thought Alex was the one who said it. After that, Alex came out and met Nakamura. He is angry because Nakamura has cheated on him, which makes him lose the opportunity to be Jessica's boyfriend. In the end, however, Alex helps Nakamura find Eber's whereabouts. Long story short, they both arrived at Eber's house. They sneaked into the house secretly and when they got to Eber's room, Alex saw a plane ticket to Thailand. Suddenly, when Eber entered the room, Nakamura threw a knife at him. Eber instantly ran scared and called the police. At that time, Alex finds out that Nakamura intends to kill Eber. Then Nakamura explained that Eber was a murderer who had killed children in Thailand, and he wanted to avenge him. Not long after, the police arrived. Luckily, they both managed to escape safely. On the way home, Alex argues with Nakamura because he feels used. He doesn't want to help Nakamura because killing people is a crime. Then Nakamura asked when the date of Eber's flight to Thailand was, but Alex didn't want to answer. This makes Nakamura angry and he threatens to kill him. However, he can't do it because of their many moments together. Therefore, Nakamura decided to kill Sune instead of him and quickly went to Alex's house. Alex hastily chased after him. Arriving at home, Alex went straight to Sune's room. At that time, he saw Nakamura trying to kill Sune and Alex was trying to block Nakamura. Soon, their parents enter and think Alex wants to kill Sune. Alex said that if he didn't want to kill Sune, it was his ninja puppet. But no one believed him, not even his own mother. Alex was finally admitted to a mental hospital. Nakamura appears inside Alex's mental hospital room. He kept asking about Eber's flight date at that place, but Alex wouldn't tell him. Nakamura still insists on killing Eber. Instead of killing him, Alex offers to help punish Eber by putting him in prison. Alex explains to Nakamura that Eber can be punished if all his crimes are caught. The doctor entered Alex's room shortly after, and Nakamura threatened the doctor to release Alex. After Alex manages to get out, he has a plan to give a gift to Eber before he flies to Thailand. The next day, Alex met his uncle with the excuse that he was getting an assignment to research drugs from school. Alex asked him how to get illegal drugs. His uncle answered by calling a man named Scooter. Then Alex asked for the Scooter's phone number, but his uncle would not give it. Because he was drunk, his uncle even accidentally showed his phone book to Alex. As a result, Alex managed to get Scooter's phone number. After that, Alex called Scooter and ordered one kilogram of illegal drugs. Hearing this made Scooter shocked, but they agreed to make a transaction somewhere. Arriving at the transaction place, Alex met Scooter and asked for the goods he had ordered. Scooter gives it and demands payment, but Alex doesn't pay Scooter properly, which makes him angry and wants to hit him. Fortunately, Nakamura appeared, beat Scooter back, and kept him in the car's trunk. After that, Alex went and put the drug into Nakamura's body. Before Nakamura left, Alex gave him a farewell gift that he had made himself, and they hugged. Long story short, they arrived at the airport. Nakamura was seen secretly using Alex's cell phone. It wasn't long before they saw Eber walking at the airport. But Eber didn't leave his suitcase in the trunk but took it straight into the cabin. They both rushed after Eber but failed because he had already entered the plane. After that, Alex had the idea to put Nakamura in someone else's bag, which was going to Bangkok. After he managed to say goodbye to Nakamura while watching him leave, Alex went home. Arriving in Thailand, Nakamura immediately chased Eber. Nakamura tries to lure the police dogs to follow him and manages to trap Eber. Eber was finally arrested by the police because he was caught carrying illegal drugs. Meanwhile, the body of the Nakamura doll was crushed by a dog bite. Elsewhere, Alex, who was at school, was approached by Jessica. She thanked him for the voicemail he had sent. It turns out that Nakamura used Alex's cell phone to correct their misunderstanding. What just happened? At dinner, his stepfather and Sune begin to treat Alex well. At the same time, news about Eber's arrest in Thailand appeared on TV. At the end of the movie, Alex sees the pickpocket news, then he leaves the house as a ninja, and the film ends. The moral that can be learned from this movie is to always do good to others even though they are treated unfairly because good deeds never end in vain.
Meanwhile, from the story of Eber and Glenn, we can learn not to disturb and do evil to others because people who do evil will be more unlucky in the future. For example, Glenn was beaten by Alex thanks to Nakamura's ninja moves, and Eber went to prison because he was framed by Nakamura.